Following my in-depth beam eye tracker and DTS2 tutorial I made a couple of months ago, some of you didn't quite achieve the perfect settings for your webcam. So in today's video we'll go over and explain every relevant settings of beam eye tracker and open truck so you'd be able to set it up yourself for Euro Truck Simulator 2 or any other game. If you haven't already, I strongly suggest you watching my in-depth review as well as my dedicated tutorial on Beam Eye Tracker, where I explain everything about this app, including the supported cameras, hardware setup, show you my settings and go over the whole process step by step. For those who don't know, Beam Eye Tracker is an affordable AI-powered software that turns your webcam or smartphone into an eye tracker and along many other features interprets your eye and implicitly your head movement in an accurate way and gets it translated into camera movement within your games. So without wasting any time, let's go over Beam Eye Tracker settings first. In general tab, first thing you can find is a calibrate button which in case something goes wrong with the tracking, it is going to recalibrate some of its parameters and fix the tracking. This is especially useful in case you change your webcam, camera position, user or lighting conditions. Next, head tracking filtering is going to increase the smoothness of the motion when the slider is set to a higher value but might introduce some latency, while a lower value will increase the response but might lower the fluency of the motion. Gaze filtering and eye tracking responsiveness have similar characteristics with head tracking filtering but regarding the movement of your eyes. Next up, tracked eyes. This is a pretty self-explanatory setting. If for example one of your eyes is covered, you can select this option accordingly. When it comes to the gaming extensions, it must be on so OpenTrack will work with Beam. Head tracking output determines whether you want the system to interpret your head movement or additionally your eye movement too. Next on the list, is the head tracking your range, which basically determines how much you'll have to turn your head to the left or to the right in order to reach full camera deflection in your game. Lower values means less head movement, higher values more head movement. Exactly the same for head tracking pitch range, but for up and down head rotation. Also similar when it comes to eye tracking yaw and pitch range options, but for the movement of your eyes. The other settings involving eye tracking overlay, multi-screen pointer, mouse jumping and so on are not having an effect on our ETS2 eye tracker setup, so we are going to skip them. Now in the camera tab you can find everything involving the physical placement of your camera which is pretty self-explanatory as well as the resolution and frame rate. Best option is to set the highest resolution so Beam can have a clear interpretation of your movements and the highest possible frame rate for a smooth tracking signal. When it comes to the OpenTrack app, first two things to set are the profile and the input. Make sure you have the iWear Beam input and Beam profile. If you're not sure how to get it, check out my in-depth tutorial where I cover the full installation of OpenTrack. You have different filter options. As far as I remember, the standard one is Axela, but to choose the best for your needs, you need to try them one by one. I personally use EWMA and I think it's the best one. You also have a couple of filter settings. The most important ones are the first two. Increasing the minimum will make the filter response lower to quick head movements. Increasing the maximum will make the filter response lower to slow head movements. Now inside the options tab you can set a couple of shortcuts. I personally use the center binding and have it set on my steering wheel. So when my in-game camera is a bit offset, let's say to the left or to the right compared to my head position, I just hit the center button and the camera position will reset to the center. In the output tab you can set whether to have an inverted axis or not. So for example if you turn your head to the right but the up turns it to the left, you invert the yaw movement and will now work accordingly. Custom center pose is when you want the position of your in-game camera to sit a bit higher or lower. So if the tracking makes your character sink into the driver's seat, instead of you getting physically positioned in a higher stance, you just move the axis by a couple of centimeters. Another very important section is the mapping tab, where you can adjust the curves according to your tracking needs. You can set them up on all axes, just like you see in the picture, yaw, pitch, roll, being the axis you can rotate your head on. And 
X, Y and Z being the axis you can move your head on, for example closer or further to the monitor, low or high in the seat, more to the left or to the right of your monitor. The X, Y and Z will move the in-game camera, the yo, pitch and roll will rotate the camera. The most important movement in ETS2 is, for example, the yo movement, because that's going to let you look left and right. Now, from left to right is the amount of degrees you can rotate your head. From bottom to top is the amount of degrees the in-game camera will move according to your head movement. In my case, if I move my head approximately 35 degrees, my in-game camera will move 130. In the first part of head turning, I want my game camera to move less, therefore the curve is pretty flat. But near the maximum head turning, I want my in-game camera to move more, therefore the curve is more abrupt. To introduce a dead zone, you can flatten the first part of the curve. This way, if you move your head a little, the game camera will not take the input. All the other axes work the very same way. My recommendation is to set and test each parameter at a time with your game opened. Also, if the tracking doesn't work in Eurotrack Simulator 2, here's a bonus tip for you to make it work. Go to the documents, Eurotrack Simulator 2 folder, search the config file and open it with notepad, then search for track IR, set it to 1 and save the file. Open track should now be recognized in Eurotrack Simulator 2. So that was it for today's video, if you have any question, leave it in the comment section and until the next one, stay tuned.